We begin this half hour with a look at the most powerful pieces of transportation anywhere. It measures one fifth of a mile long with well over a million horsepower and cost almost 13 billion dollars. And it's a Ford. Well, sort of. It's the Navy's new supercarrier, which is being named today for the late President Gerald R. Ford. The ceremony is taking place at the Grumman Shipyard in Newport News, Virginia. And Chip Reed is there. Chip, good morning. Well, good morning, Anthony and Vanita. You can see it behind me, the massive technological marvel, the Gerald R. Ford. Now, you may be wondering why they're christening a ship that is far from complete. It doesn't sail until 2016. Well, the reason is that in a few days, it's going to be towed by tugboats to another dock near here, and tradition dictates that the first time a ship floats, that's when you christen it. The Gerald R. Ford is the first in the next generation of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. The name is a tribute to President Ford, who served in the South Pacific in World War II. He passed away in 2006. How would your father feel about this? Well, one, he would be in shock because he never would have expected this. And um, he just wasn't that kind of a man, but he was a naval officer. He was a lieutenant commander. Susan Ford Bales, President Ford's daughter, will christen the ship later this morning, not with French champagne, but with a bottle of American sparkling wine. It's a way to continue his legacy. This ship will be here for 50 years. I won't be here, but the ship will be here for 50 years. Construction began eight years ago. For many of the 5,000 shipbuilders, it's a labor of love. Rebecca Ann Boyd has been here since the beginning. You can't help but get emotional. You know, worked on this boat all this time, you know, and and to be picked for the, to do this is just it's just an honor. It's designed to launch and recover aircraft that we don't even know exist yet. Captain John Meyer says many of the ship's upgrades are highly classified, but the ones he can talk about are dramatic improvements over current carriers. The tower, called the island, has been moved farther back on the deck. By moving it aft, you get more space for aircraft. You get room for about eight additional aircraft. The nuclear reactors will produce three and a half times as much power, and electromagnetic energy instead of steam power will catapult planes into the wild blue yonder. 220 feet from zero to 160. The bridge will bristle with state-of-the-art communications and warfare technology. Do you look forward to a day when you get to sit in a chair right there, the Absolutely captain's seat? Absolutely do. That's a, a day I, I'm very much looking forward to. I really believe that sailors belong at sea. A recent investigation by the Government Accountability Office found technical design and construction challenges that have led to significant cost increases. There have also been delays, but the shipbuilders say they're addressing those challenges. Susan Ford Bales understands how important this ship will be for the defense of the nation, but for her, it's also deeply personal. So this is a very emotional time for you. It's very emotional because my dad's spirit is in that boat and I can feel it. And the shipbuilders have been amazing and I love my crew. I love the captain. They're my new family and it's just been an amazing experience. Speaking of emotional, at a dinner last night, Susan Ford Bales presented a gift to the ship, the flag that draped her father's casket. I'm told there was hardly a dry eye in the house. And Anthony and Vanita, by the way, this is no longer the Grumman shipyard. It's now Newport News Shipbuilding. Thanks for the correction, Trip Chip Reed. That's a beautiful ship. It's extraordinary. Chip Reed yes, in Newport News, Virginia, thanks so much.